Um, okay, so um, for um, David Washburn's presentation, David is, um, as you've already heard, um, is until recently a voice of San Diego, which he's going to use as a, as a talking point, and is um, in the process of, of moving to a, a new organization, um, but a voice of Orange County. But um, you can talk to you a little bit about um, the, the new media, which is part of our focus today. So the internet, and this is the way people will probably be getting more and more of their news. Well, it's certainly happening now. So it. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, very quickly, yes, I, uh, for the last two years I've worked for Voice of San Diego. I just recently, in fact, uh, like yesterday was my first day as the managing editor of Voice of Orange County, which is another startup, nonprofit, independent, uh, uh, primarily in this case, news and, and, and uh, or government and politics website. So I am uh, joining a longtime friend and colleague uh, up in Orange County to get that thing off the ground. It was a very difficult decision, uh, mainly because of the opportunities that I had at Voice of San Diego and uh, over the last uh, year plus in the science, in the realm of science coverage. Uh, everything that Kim told you uh, is correct. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way. The, um, uh, not that he needs to be accuracy checked or anything, but the, um, it, you know, science coverage has suffered mightily in this uh, downturn. Uh, and, the news, the news industry in general has suffered uh, disproportionately in this downturn, and you know, going down another level, science coverage has suffered uh, disproportionately. It is, uh, I believe, it's uh, the blame lies uh, in three places. It lies with uh, people like me, the practitioners of uh, the, the writers and editors who uh, decide what uh, you know what is news and what isn't news. Um, the readers, I mean, you folks uh, deserve some of the blame for not, when I say you folks, I'm obviously saying in general, um, for not reading enough science news and not demanding enough science news. I mean, we really are, you know, we will write about what you want us to write about. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, it's, it's, it really is that simple. Um, when Michael Jackson dies and servers, you know, entire sites crash, because everybody wants to, you know, know that piece of news. I mean, that people take notice of that, of course. And so, it, it's a three-way street, or it's a three. The blame can be spread the three ways. That I believe the scientists have some uh, responsibility here too. Is is that they, you know, they want their stuff out there, and they need to do, quite frankly, a better job of engaging the public in what they do, and, and make an effort to get out there. And do that. So I think everybody needs to kind of step up a little bit if we want if we want uh, science coverage to continue and, and for it to become more robust. Now, um, having said that, I'm going to focus mainly on what it is that uh, you know why we make some of the decisions we make, why you see some of the science news that you see, and. Uh, and we can have that discussion. What I'm going to do is open it up pretty quickly just to some questions, to a Q&A, hopefully, that, in which we can, you know, have a discussion about this, and so maybe we can come to some conclusion, uh, you know, as to what to do. How do we, A, make science uh, coverage less hype and more substance, and B, how do we, you know, get it to, to keep, uh, to, to continue it? Um, First thing I want to do is just, I do think that Voice of San Diego is a, is, is a rare success story in, in recent years, not only in the world of journalism in general, but in, in, as far as science coverage. Thanks uh, to a generous grant from the Ledger uh, Benbao Foundation, local uh, foundation, we, they were, we received a grant from that foundation specifically for a, a science reporter. Um, and the reason was it was a response to what's happened as far as you know the science uh, reporters being laid off, taking the buyouts, their positions being eliminated, science sections going away. That was noticed, and this is a response to it. And so we have for the for more than a year been at a, a, a specific science uh, site, and I will just kind of go through it and give you some examples of what we're doing. Um, Forgive me, this is the first day of a big redesign for Voice of San Diego, and so if I click on some things and maybe it doesn't go where I think it should, it's just, you know, the, 
typical bugs that come with a redesign, with a relaunch. Um, so the way we cover it is, is we try to do um, it as much as we can. Now, Kim talks about basic science, and that is, you know, like biology, physics. I mean, what are the breakthroughs in those in those fields? And that, quite frankly, it's, it's, it is, as uh, Kim said, some of the most difficult science to kind of really engage the readership about because it is, you know, it's you have a hard time saying, okay, so what does this mean to me in my daily life that they, you know, that there was this breakthrough in uh, in biology or in physics or something like that. And the reality is that it could be a tremendous impact on your life, but it's not going to be noticeable when you wake up in the morning or, you know, in, in immediately. I mean, this kind of research is, uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of times that there's a long way to go before it's going to have, you know, an impact. But as we know from things that have happened, everything from the, you, you know, the, the you know, the advances that we have experienced in, in our health and in technology, that these, you know, everything that we take for granted today, whether it be, you know, treatments for, uh, uh, you know, diseases or whatever, you know, at one point in time was a, a discovery that, you know, took a long time to develop. So having said that, it is tough to do the basic science reporting. We, we, we do a, a, as good a job as, as we can with it. A lot of the science that we do, um, like, like we try to mix it up. We have, like, let's just say, here's some of the, the stories we've done recently. We did a uh, story, our most recent story is, is how stem cell technology uh, is being used, um, or perhaps could be used, to deal with uh, extinction, you know, endangered species. And quite frankly, you know, can we use stem cells to clone? Endangered species like the right want rhino or, or, or other endangered species, and so there there is uh, an effort uh, by the zoo and um, some uh, mainly from this uh, the zoo. What's it called? It's the San Diego Zoo's Institute for for Conservation. You have some researchers doing that kind of, of research for that. Another th uh, type of science. So we kind of try to mix it up where we do that kind of science, um, where we're looking at you know discovery type science, and then we're also, San Diego is home to uh, one of the three largest biotech hubs in uh, the world. I mean, you, you essentially have the Bay Area, you have San Diego, and then you have Boston, the three areas where biotech uh, is, you have established hubs. And so we have hundreds of companies that employ tens of thousands of people and have billions of dollars of impact on their local economy from biotech. So we do a lot of our reporting on um, uh, what's happening in the world of, of biotech. And so, like I found myself when I was doing a lot of my reporting, I would report a lot on, you know, a lot of it was on the business of uh, biotech and, you know, what's happening because that business is suffering incredibly from the downturn. They can't get credit. Venture capitalists aren't funding innovation. New discoveries aren't being you know, aren't making that leap from the lab to commercialization, whether it be stem cell type stuff or, or other technologies. And so there's a lot to be written about there. Um, and so I write about, and also with the healthcare reform, you have, um, uh, with the healthcare reform, you have issues as far as biotech, and because, you know, they develop drugs, they, they depend on the revenues from those drugs. Uh, we're trying to, you know, the, the part of healthcare reform is cutting the cost of, of, of uh, pharmaceuticals, and so there's a big political issue there, and we've covered some of that. But so a lot of it's that we've done some things on, um, uh, you know, efforts that's happening right now to fight some of those. You talk about personal health; there, those are the types of stories that get a lot of attention, and so we do within our rotation, within our mix. Try to do stories, not the stuff like you know, you know, this diet will do this for you, or or that kind of poppy, I guess is the word for it, um, uh, health coverage, but stuff like you know the the very important issue of you know those staph infections that are antibiotic resistance in hospitals, and that there are people here that are working on that kind of you know research to develop. Not only you have researchers doing that, but you have companies developing products for that. So. That's some of the stuff we've done. And then again, like Kim was saying, we, we have a blog. Um, and again, 
forgive me a little bit. I'm trying to some of the uh, the site redesign, some of the stuff that I that was there before is not so much there the same way. Here we go. Recent post. So you know, in addition to that, whoops. See, well there you go. That's the beauty of redesigns. So we, we do have uh, blogs where we will have. I will be writing. The, doing Q and A's with researchers, just quick, like two or three question Q and A's. I will, uh, you know, be keeping up with stories that we wrote about that we have follow ups on. And then, like Kim was saying, we are we're continuing to try to get scientists to write. You know, we'll give you the space, we'll give you the pixels if you're willing to, you know, sit down and write something, you know, about your research or about an issue you think needs to be aired in in the world of science that's not being aired. So. That is, we are trying to create, you know, essentially what can best be described as a as a uh, uh, community of, um, you know, a, a community of people where it's not just us writing stories. It, that there's an interaction between us and not only the scientists but then the readership, and so we develop an interest in a really robust community around our science coverage. Um, I'm trying to. We have, and again, I, I do. This is. We're in a situation where we have, oh, this, is so far, um, this is new, like we, we have the RSS feeds directly, now I don't know where they are right now, but they are, uh, here's our Twitter feed, there's, I don't know what, Kim, I mean, I'm, obviously we'll get that squared away, so let me see what we have. I'm not seeing where they're putting the RSS feeds. They used to have them just right at the bottom of the page, but again, this was the, this is the first day of a, of a, a redesign, so there's just probably some things that they still need to get squared away. Um, but what we have is the RSS feeds, where you know you can read our stories, but then you can go down to UCSD's uh, feed, you can go to Scripps Institution of Oceanography's feed, you can go to these, and you can get. You know, if you really want to drill down and find out what's, you know, what all the research is happening, you can go straight there. And as Kim was saying, the writing, I mean, it's not like dry researcher writing. I mean, you pull up some of the, you, you know, the releases that they're doing on basic things. I mean, it's, it's journalism, talented journalists writing about, obviously from a point of view, you know, they're going to, it's not going to be, you know, a UCSD release is not going to, uh, it's just basically going to say, well, here's the research we're doing. Uh, this is the impact it has. It's not going to, for example, seek out you know other researchers who might have issues with it or stuff like that. So they will handle it differently than I might covering it as a as a uh, as a news story. But if you want to learn about what's going on and learn about it in an engaging way, you can just go straight to the RSS feeds of the various institutions and really you know have a good time reading about it. Um, just to, to kind of, and I do want to open it up to just some questions about, you know, if, if you want any information about, you know, how 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 do stories get chosen and things like that, and kind of the, you know, how the sausage is made. <coughs> questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, you know, I think one of the issues, and Kim touched on this briefly, that we have with science coverage is it's just, you know, it's so it, it is so quickly politicized. So often, and, and, and as Kim and I talked about on these days this morning, we had that you know as part of this whole uh, panel we're doing here, we we were on these days this morning, and then yesterday we were on the uh, uh, Channel Six, the CW, and we had a we showed up at 7 a.m. to sit and talk with the anchors about you know the issues that we're talking about right here, what's going on with science coverage, you know, and, you know how uh, you know how do we uh, you know, deal with the, the dec general decline in science news and then some of that, the issues of hype versus uh, reality in, in, in the way science news is portrayed. And so we're, Kim and I are there ready to answer and have like a real, you know, meaty discussion about this and the anchor comes over and he just jumps into global warming. What I heard that uh, scientists are uh, fudging the data that, that shows global warming as, as something that is caused by humans. And so, it immediately, you know, became this discussion, is global warming real or not? And the science has weighed in on that, you know, I mean, the science, the scientific community there, it's just, it's unequivocal. I mean, there is, the, the, there is an overwhelming consensus that human activities have caused global warming. And so, but if we keep 
if that if that becomes the you know whatever if you just continue that political controversy over it right there's still going to be you know is global warming for real and that still gets a lot of hits you know and that still gets a lot of uh, response then those kind of stories are still going to dominate and other stories about basic science about some of the important basic research that goes on you know we'll never make it to the front page or even to the front page of the science section because it's going to be well what gets us the clicks what gets us the readership well if you throw out another is global warming for real story maybe we'll you know that's what people want and so I think we need to what we need to do is have the discipline to move on from some of the highly politicized stories just because we know that they'll get us a lot of response and move on to the more important stories and I think what what the, you know we have to do as citizens is say you know what we've had enough of whether global warming is for real or not you know it's time for us to move on past that issue and if we want to have some you know meteor stories on you know how uh, you know some of the science behind how our climate is going to change well that's fine but I think if we get past some of that that will be um, I think that'll be a good thing I wonder if part of the decline in science coverage could be the result of the fact that new, the editors, you know, because every time they bring up something about stem cells, every time they bring up something about um, global warming, you know, you have this huge, you know, you just get hit from all sides on, on the political, uh, you know, from on the political angle. I think it's partly, and I'm not going to digress too much, but some of that is that, you know, we don't have our immigration coverage is not as intelligent and as deep and as hard hitting as it should be because every time we talk about immigration it all comes down to the political aspects you know who should be here who should not be here instead of looking deeper into that issue so I think that is something that, that is an important thing to discuss and to think about when we think about our science coverage um, and just get our oh it's done in my mind that's fine it's no big deal um, you guys got a sense of things um, so that's kind of my, you know, my sense of things. I, I you know, when I do a, a story, I am looking out. I had just a wonderful time because what I am is not, um, I'm a journalist by trade. I am not someone who was a scientist who became a journalist. I'm a journalist who became a science writer. And so it was just an amazing experience for me to be able to, you know, call up somebody you know, it, it, you know that, that Kim turned me on to, or you know somebody at Scripps, or any number of, of uh, institutions. Because we have an amazing, I mean, the, the science talent in San Diego is just it just blows your mind. The people and institutions of what's happening here, and so I just had a wonderful time. You know, you know whether it be you know stuff about you know, things that people are really interested in, or, or hot topics, so to speak, like the, the swine flu. Or things about you know astrophysics and like the beginning. I got to do stories on like the guy at UCSD who is trying to find you know prove the exact moment that the universe began and and, and, and incredible things like that. And it was just an amazing experience. And, and and what I try to do is make that you know find a way to tell that story you know impart that information in a way that. People are it, it, people are learning something from it, and it is something that is accessible to them, and that they can relate to, and maybe does have some uh, effect on their lives. And so that is the big, that's the tough thing, and that's where you have the scientists get reluctant because they're like, you know, they you know I'll talk to them, and, ah, you know, you're not going to get it right, and it's just going to make my life you know more difficult when you get the story wrong and I have to explain no that's not my report my research said it said something else but I guess you know what it this was more sexy so we went with it you know that kind of stuff um, I got that kind of uh, vibe sometimes from researchers when I first talked to them now I think I run one over a lot of them because I would talk to them for an hour and a half two hours on the phone and then call them back and say did I get this right did I get that right um, however you know that that is an issue as far as I have to write stories that are accessible to the lay person but at the same time I do want scientists to respect my writing and respect what I'm doing and you know and get an and gain an audience of, of scientists because I think 
you know, and, and Kim can answer this more accurately, but I don't think scientists put much stock in like the science section of the daily newspaper. I think they probably that's not what they're reading. If they want to have science news, they're reading, you know, far more high level stuff. I mean they're reading nature and the science magazine and stuff like that. I would like to create some sort of community where we can have scientists kind of be active in the coverage of whether it's Voice of San Diego's or whether it's the Union Tribune's, whether it's uh, KPBS and science coverage, that there is a more, you know, that we are more active. And I think it's, it, it is, requires us to, in, in the media, to say, you know what, we're going to do these stories that might taste like broccoli sometimes. You know, it's not the candy. But, you know, we're going to do these because we know it's good and we know that the readership is not going to be huge, but we're going to keep doing it. The scientists are going to engage with us and not just, uh, you know, tell us that uh, we're not worthy. And then the readership is going to say, you know what, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to my kids and I'm going to, uh, you know, make this a part of my day. And I think we've got to do that. I think the, the, the question is how do we get there? And I want to have that discussion. If anyone has any ideas, if anyone has any comments about, about our coverage, Voice of San Diego in particular, the media in general, I think now's a good time to you know, maybe have some of that. So why don't I open it up right now? Sir. Well, it seems like you've uh, tried to preempt this, but it, to me, it's probably the most important story that has come out over the past two weeks, and that's the, whether or not these scientists are pledging their data about global warming, or whether or not they're discarding their initial data, or whether they're using tricks in order to present that data to us. Uh, all those things are really important questions because we're spending billions of dollars on this subject in this country. It's already a political issue. For you to say that uh, skeptics are politicizing it is really disingenuous. And it seems to me that that should have been plastered all over page one of your, of your magazine. Well, I mean, that's a, uh, that is a uh, very, I mean, you raise an important, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to respond to that, quite frankly, because, um, you know, there are certain things. It's like uh, the gentleman said, what do you do about the 40% of people who don't believe in evolution. You know, evolution has been, and Kim, you can help me out here, I mean, evolution has been <coughs> proven. You know, global warming has been proven. I mean, I don't know... Evolution is a theory. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist. Evolution is a theory. I'm a scientist. I have taught science for the past 25 years at college level. And I believe in evolution because it's a good theory, but it's a theory. It's a theory like uh, Einstein's theory and, and like the theory of general theory. And all those things are subject to review. But it seems like none of the newspapers are picking up this story. Actually, your, your point is, is an excellent one, and it is a theory. And I think part of the issue here isn't whether it's a theory or not. The point is that that's the best science that we have in that area. That's why that's what we work with. I agree. And I think the argument here is that for global warming, the evidence is pretty overwhelming from, a, from most scientists in the world. And if we argued that 98% of scientists are working together in a conspiracy to lie to us about that, then that's just that 98% of people in any group would probably be willing to do that. And I would like to think that 98% of the people in this room would rather be honest than dishonest. I don't know the data on scientists fabricating the data, but I think what we should talk about today is focused not on whether that particular story is right or wrong, but I think what we have is, we've hit on several of them. We've talked about vaccines before here, we've talked about stem cells in this area before, we've talked about global warming, we've talked about evolution. And in each of these areas, rightly or wrongly, there is an almost overwhelming scientific consensus, but it is not unanimous on anything, and you would not expect it to be unanimous on anything. I think the question from a news media perspective is, what do we do to help 
make those stories that is our best understanding of science now, make them understood. And if there is some data that, that disagrees with that, then what's the place for that? I think that's a fair question. But 